up, guys, and welcome to another edition of the Market Marauder Show, being the market one trade at a time. Hope everybody's having a great week out there, able to lock in some profits. In this episode, we're going to be talking about RoboTaxi, giving an analysis of some of the things going on in the market as we prepare for the August 8th reveal from Tesla of the RoboTaxi. Now, Waymo has their version of RoboTaxi, going to be giving an analysis of that a little bit later on. Also, some of the updates that have gone on technology-wise with new chips and development, as well as some of the AI approaches that Elon Musk himself have announced for Tesla and how they plan to implement these new AI models to Tesla for the introduction and rollout of RoboTaxi, as well as Optimus. So let's jump into some um, B-roll for Waymo uh, and Waymo basically has a similar platform to Tesla uh, and they already have it on the streets but let's see what they're doing and how they're implementing their version of the robo taxi I saw a couple cars come and go I got the bright idea well you know I can also hail one of these cars and maybe I can cause one to become unparked and come out and get me so I put the destination in as normal and here I'm adjusting the pickup and putting it just beyond the end of the parking lot. And now, in fact, it has matched me to one of the cars that's in the parking lot. It's the one off the end that started moving and very painfully coming to my location. The interesting thing is that they've chosen to show the location of the car in the app, even when the car is within the depot. So if you hail the Waymo, you can zoom all the way in. And if you see that little line segment going into the parking lot, then that's how you know it's coming from the depot. So it gets a little bit closer, we get a good look at the plate, and yep, it's definitely our car. At this point, I'm remembering that Waymo has a no-show fee that I believe gets charged when the car shows up, but then you cancel the ride after the car has already pulled over. So before that happens, I have a very short uh, distance that I can cancel the ride. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel it because I don't actually wanna take it. Just as the car that I hailed left the depot, another unrelated car is coming back. And that gives you an idea of how busy these places are. Now, I believe Waymo has some great technology. Um, I think that they have significant fleet uh, that they're already using. Ultimately for the stats uh, for Waymo, some things that I've seen uh, Waymo has 7.1 million driverless miles, uh, which has resulted them being 6.7 7 times less likely than human drivers to be involved in a crash resulting in an injury or 85% reduction over a human benchmark and 2.3 times less likely to be in a police reported crash or 57% reduction and then all that data translates to an estimated 17 fewer injuries and 20 fewer police report crashes uh, to if human drivers would have been driving in the same situation or same cities where Waymo is. I think the benefit that Tesla has here um, is just they have such a large existing fleet and they're really harping on the data. Um, I think, you know, starting off on the section that they had with Waymo, uh, Waymo really started off as kind of like a project and then developed into a company. Uh, they had, you know, their groundwork process that they had beginning with the company and then they had um, pre-bought that emerged into becoming Project Chauffeur and then Waymo itself. And so I think, you know, them collecting data, getting a lot of investors, they really built their project around a research uh, project or built the company around a research project. And I think that's good uh, for the company. I think they'll be a direct competitor uh, to Tesla, but I think Tesla has really built their model around being a business and being business centric and focused. They really started off with the infrastructure portion of it and then continued to grow um, with the vehicles that they had out there, had people grow to like the vehicles themselves, um, understand how they operate. Then they had their full self-driving portion. Uh, that came out and now moving to autonomous, I think it's going to be, you know, a groundbreaking day for uh, the company as a whole, kind of wrapping up all the technology they've been working on. Um, but that's just for me, 
let's watch and see what Elon Musk's thoughts are about RoboTaxi and some of the hardware around its FSD that they currently have. Um, hardware fi AI5, which we're calling switching from Hardware 5 to AI5, will be in Optimus and in, in all cars in, in about 18 months. Um, and it's really just a, a staggering amount of compute. And it's very, it's very power efficient compute. So it's, it's got to be, because if you're in a mobile application like a humanoid robot or a car, you, you can't just be sucking down 10 kilowatts, you know, like you can in a data center. Um, so you, you've got to be very power efficient. Um, so the, you know, um, sort of h hardware three and four are only a few hundred watts. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is hard. <laughs> Now, hardware five will we'll be able to go probably up to about seven or eight hundred watts, it, but it'll it'll power fluctuate um, contingent upon the complexity of the scene that it is that it is in. So if it is in a you know parking lot station area, it's like you know you know you don't have to think very much. Just like a person, like if you're in a complicated traffic scenario, you've got to think a lot more than if you're just cruising along, you know, on an empty road. Um, but something that I think is potentially interesting down the road is, like at some point, the Tesla fleet, I think, will probably be you know, over 100 million vehicles. And if each vehicle has a kilowatt of efficient inference compute, um, I think there's, a, there's, I think there's an, an, uh, sort of an Amazon Web Services, AWS type opportunity. Because if you've got 100 million vehicles with a kilowatt of efficient inference compute, you've got 100 gigawatts of compute. Like 100 gigawatts of compute is a lot, and it's distributed all over the world. So even, so when the car is not in autonomous mode, which I think probably is, you know, in, or, or doing robo-taxi work, maybe 50, 60 hours a week, but about 100 hours a week, it's, it's not, uh, it, it's probably stationary. So, so there's 100 hours of 100 gigawatts of inference compute, which I think we should use. Um, <laughs> why not? Um, you know, when, when, when people looked at Amazon, which started out obviously as an online bookseller, and it's done, you know, uh, it, it has grown to be like this incredible place where you can buy anything, and, and, then, they, and then Amazon Web Services, like, well, they got all these computers, that only really see peak usage sometimes, um, but what are they gonna do when it's not peak usage? Um, and sometimes the Amazon servers are down at like 10%, so that's when they said, well, let's do Amazon Web Services. And then Amazon Web Services became more valuable than the entire rest of Amazon. And anyway, I think there's, there's some kind of opportunity there that's pretty significant for, for Tesla down the road. Um, you know, again, that's really nobody's really factoring that in, um, but I think that that actually will be quite significant. Uh, we also no, are no longer compute constrained uh, for training, uh, so uh, I, I check in with the team. It's like, um, is there anything we could do to improve the pace of progress with respect to training and inference? Uh, and currently, that is not the limiting factor. In fact, the, the limiting factor right now is that the the, the amount of miles between interventions is uh, so long that it takes quite a while to figure out which version is better than the other version because that none of them are requiring any inter interventions. <laughs> so it's like, you know, if you start getting to like thousands of miles between interventions or you're like 10,000 miles to get an intervention, then like, well, the average person only drives about 10,000 miles in a year. Um, and if it's in, a, in a, an urban environment and the average speed is 20 miles an hour, I mean, so our professional test drivers get pretty bored, frankly. <laughs> you know, they, they're like, okay, I drove all week and there was no intervention. Like, like the highlight of the week would be like, yes, an intervention, finally. <laughs> it's like getting to that point. Um, so, th so this is where uh, actually having uh, a giant fleet is extremely important because we can deploy uh, a new FSD model and run it in shadow mode and see, what, see how well it performs. Uh, you know, compare the, how the human drives the car versus the, the new self-driving build, 
and, and then analyze that delta in shadow mode, like the shadow knows, uh, or doesn't know, um, as the case may be, and, and then be able to assess uh, be, by getting billions of miles uh, very quickly uh, with the giant fleet. Like that, basically, that, that data engine is incredibly helpful. Like, I, I actually, it's not possible to solve the self driving problem without having millions of vehicles on the road. So, um, now, like Elon said during the shareholder meeting, I think that their prize to really roll out this robo taxi, uh, they've really focused on collecting as much data as possible um, using things such as NVIDIA's platform, uh, being the NVIDIA Blackwell that has recently been released, the platform uh, that has helped the NVIDIA stock shoot up significantly. I think if they continue to grow with this collecting data using the efficiencies of not having um, them over computing, getting all of the data while the system is idle or in shadow mode, as he explained in the video, I think those are great things that will help train the models. And then also, you know, when you're training AI models, having that data um, and then having the data being back tested against itself and not having any inferences or any errors that are coming up. And that error being delayed for longer portions of time, meaning, you know, like you said, people sitting around with no errors, um, kind of running out of miles, getting all that data that people have from the existing fleet, and then having people be able to have the opportunity to upgrade their existing fleet, meaning they won't have to buy a new vehicle, just upgrade a plan, and really using the software that's already embedded into the system and not get a new model is something that you know, I've really seen trend between NVIDIA as well as uh, Tesla themselves. So using what customers already have um, is a huge key selling point. You don't have to buy anything new. And then also upgrading what you currently have with new features, just using it as software. So really software as a system, um, which I think is something that the company is moving more towards and focusing on using that real-time data with the new forms of technology that are out there to really enhance the customer or user experience to give them the most amount of benefit that they can have with this new platform. So I think rolling out the RoboTaxi on August 8th will be great. I think it definitely is a groundbreaking um, event for the company as a whole. Um, briefly going to segue into NVIDIA's platform just to give some background on where technology itself is and how it is helping to enhance this AI revolution with the rise of the robo-taxis. This last 60 years, we saw several tectonic shifts in computing where everything changed. And we're about to see that happen again. The further performance we drive up, the greater the cost decline. Hopper platform, of course, was the most successful data center processor probably in history. However, Blackwell is here and every single platform, as you'll notice, are several things. You've got the CPU, you have the GPU, you have NVLink, you have the NIC, and you have the switch. Every single generation, as you'll see, is not just the GPU, but it's the entire platform. We build the entire platform. We integrate the entire platform into an AI factory supercomputer. However, then we disaggregate it and offer it to the world. Our basic philosophy is very simple. One, build the entire data center scale disaggregate it and sell it to you in parts on a one-year rhythm, and we push everything to technology limits. Whatever TSMC process technology will push it to the absolute limits. Whatever packaging technology, push it to the absolute limits. Whatever memory technology, push it to the ab absolute limits. Surtees technology, optics technology, everything is pushed to the limit. Well, Blackwell is here. Next year is Blackwell Ultra. Just as we had H100 and H200, you'll probably you know, see some pretty exciting new generation from us for Blackwell Ultra. Well, this is the very first time, and I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to regret this or not. We have code names in our company, and uh, we try to keep them very secret. Most of the employees don't even know. But our next generation platform is called Rubin. So we have the Rubin platform, and one year later, we have the Rubin um, Ultra platform. All of these chips that I'm showing you here are all in full development, 100% of them. And the rhythm is one year at the limits of technology, all 100% architecturally compatible. So this is, this is 
basically what NVIDIA is building and all of the riches of software on top of it. So in a lot of ways, the last 12 years, the company has really transformed tremendously. And I want to thank all of our partners here for supporting us every step along the way. This is the NVIDIA Blackwell platform. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Blackwell. This is our production board. This is the most complex, highest performance computer the world's ever made. This is the gray CPU. And these are, you could see each one of these Blackwell dies, two of them connected together. You see that? It is the largest die, the, the largest chip the world makes. And then we connect two of them together with a 10 terabyte per second link. And the performance is incredible. Take a look at this. The AI flops uh, for each generation has increased by a thousand times in eight years. And so just to compare, even Moore's Law at its best of times compared to what Blackwell could do. So the amount of computations is incredible. And when, whenever we bring the computation high, the... Now, NVIDIA itself really has changed the game with the introduction of the Blackwell platform. I think with thought processes like these, implementing uh, new technologies, revolutionizing technology, really challenging uh, the physics of how we've done things in the past are great innovations for companies overall, but it helps the end user. So being able to implement the Blackwell platform into existing data centers will help companies such as Tesla. And so Tesla being, you know, trying to collect all this data, they have to have somewhere to store it. They understand how data centers work and then kind of paralleling with, okay, technology is upgraded. And now we're rolling out more things that we've already trained on our models uh, because the technology can now support it, I think go hand in hand. So I think this will be a direct um, kind of technology boom between having the RoboTaxi move uh, at the same speed as the technology from uh, NVIDIA's Blackwell platform. But there also have been a couple of analysis from some of the market makers, I would say, one being from Kathy Woods, the other one from Dan Ives. And I think they've really had a good bullish sentiment with some background data that they have done themselves with their research teams on their projections for the August 8th rollout and how Tesla plans to implement this and what it means for the market cap overall of the company. So let's jump into Kathy Woods and her analysis. Expected. So $2,600 a share. Yes. Help, help us do the math. How do you get there? What has to happen and for when all do of you that? Get there? <laughs> this is a five year uh, price target, uh, as all of ours are. And uh, what has to happen is uh, an autonomous taxi platform, Tesla's autonomous taxi platform. Uh, so robo taxis, um, uh, which is a SaaS like model. Instead right. of selling a car and maybe the software package, and that's it. Uh, this becomes a recurring revenue model, a slice of every mile driven on that autonomous taxi network. Very high margins. Right, right now, uh, auto gross margins are around 16 percent. Uh, gross margins in the SaaS world are more like 80 percent. Right. How big a market does that have to become for Tesla to get to the $2,600 price? The reason I ask is there are some cities that, that may allow this to take place. There may be geofenced areas where people are going to do this. And there's also obviously a larger view that one day these cars will be able to do everything by themselves everywhere in the country. Yes. Well, this is the largest AI project on Earth, uh, uh, autonomous mobility broadly. And um, I think it's going to catch on as quickly as that. Now, of course, what we've had during the last uh, uh, 10 years right. is uh, a movement toward FSD, and now we're seeing safety statistics. And I remember full self-driving for those uninitiated. Full, yeah, right. full self-driving. You you look at the um, number of miles between accidents for the average car in the United States. It's about two hundred thousand miles. Right. Uh, you look at a Tesla without FSD, full self-driving, uh, just uh, autopilot. Right. It's more like six hundred thousand miles with. Full self-driving and, and an older version, not even the latest, six, nine months ago, 3.2 million miles. Tasha Keeney has done this work. You know, Volvo built a brand on safety. 
So like I said earlier, using that SaaS model um, and really leveraging the existing fleet that they have um, alongside using the um, upgrades and technology as well as, you know, benefiting from the data that's already been collected and changing or transitioning from just a product service to a SaaS service, I think speaks volumes. I know Ford was one of the companies that have kind of been inkling on they're not going to be the only ones trying to solve this from scratch. So if Tesla can move to being a software as a service company, um, building the platform and then integrating into other companies using some of the advances that have happened uh, with NVIDIA and their Blackwell platform. I think um, I agree with what Kathy Woods is saying on this $2,600 price target. Um, I think the analysis is there. I think the only problem is trying to get Wall Street or the market themselves to really rally around it. Um, and understand how technology is working. So it's kind of a 50-50. It's a new technology. Um, it's something that currently is not in the market. So I know when looking at the release of Cybertruck, it was something that came out. Um, it was more of a design sort of thing, but it was kind of a redefining of a truck. Um, but there was a lot of hype that was around it. Um, having F FSD, which was originally full self-driving come out, was a new concept. The way that it was being implemented by Tesla. I know there are forms of it out there with uh, lane assist or lane keep assist uh, on different platforms, but having full self-driving is just a new concept that a lot of people had, but people really rallied around it. So I think getting Wall Street to understand how this is working um, with the August 8th date uh, would be something that would be positive for the market overall. Um, and it really gets, to, gets Tesla an opportunity to show what they're capable of. Um, I think showing and giving the demonstration of the technology uh, speaks more volumes than explaining what it can do. So I think, you know, going and targeting towards the August 8th date, having people or the market itself be able to digest, OK, this is what it's capable of. Um, I think also going and looking at the Waymo platform and what they currently are doing kind of shows like, hey, this is what it's capable of. But Tesla being the company it is, everyone you know, rallying around it already, but saying that they can upgrade their existing fleet uh, to have this availability because it's a software now, I think speaks volumes. And I think the icing on the cake with this really is what Dan Ives is saying. Um, I think him explaining it um, from his perspective, uh, being a longtime Tesla bull is definitely something that I think a lot of people are looking at overall. So let's jump into what he said, uh, and then I'll come back with my analysis for what I think Tesla is going to do overall. Joining me now to make his case, Wedbush Securities Managing Director Dan Ives. It's just like, you know, we talk about these big pay packages. It's like billion dollars, and it really is that. But to the point, if Robo Taxi is the next big thing, do you think that this is the man who can lead Tesla to the future? And does, does RoboTaxi, is that the thing that's going to make Tesla regain its trillion dollar market cap? Musk is Tesla. Tesla is Musk. And I think ultimately right now, Tesla is the most undervalued AI play in the market. I mean, I believe the AI component of Tesla could be worth one to two trillion alone. And this can that's to, in my view, this is really the beginning of what is going to be just a massive stage of growth for Musk and Tesla. August 8th, in my opinion, will be a historical day for Tesla. OK, they unveil it August 8th. Any idea when production starts, when we would actually see robo taxis on the road? Look, I think over the next like 18 months, I mean, this is something we're, we're not talking three, four years away, I think. This is the start of what's going to be not just robo taxis, but when you talk about full self driving and autonomous, I Tesla is an autonomous AI company, mm -hmm. it does disruptive tech, and I think we will be looking at ultimately a stock that could potentially double over the next 12, 18 months. All right, so looking at where the stock is currently located at the time of recording, it is at 180. 70 so 180 dollars and 70 cents per share uh, if we look at the chart towards the beginning of june 
It was down around $174.34 and has hit a high of $182.51 per share. Uh, its moving average uh, 5 is currently at $181.32. Moving average 10 is at $181.45. And the moving average 20 is at $179.90. So I'd say overall, for the stock as a whole, uh, it's kind of in the in-between portion. I would say it is bullish um, or on its way to be bullish based on it hitting this $182.51 level. But I do still think there are some mixed reactions in the market as a whole. Um, so on tip ranks, uh, which is kind of a stock screener um, that gives a lot of good analysts on where the market is pricing it. There's a high, tar high price target for $310 a share, an average price target for $174.60 per share, and a low of $22.86 per share, with nine of the analysts giving it a sell. 14 of the analysts giving it a hold and 10 giving it a buy. I would agree with that analysis with the 14 being the largest number as a hold. I think a lot of the market is waiting for the actual rollout of RoboTaxi and what that means and how fast that can be implemented into the market. So during a couple of those videos talking about the 18 months time frame, 12 to 18 months being able to roll out. I think that's kind of the key target that the market is looking for. If that can be implemented um, and when that's implemented, showing um, the features of changing over from full self-driving to having full autonomous and what that means in the market as a whole. I think once that's shown or demonstrated, the market will have more confidence around that. Uh, there may be a short rally coming up to that because I would put this similar to um, an earnings report, but I think it is a groundbreaking um, event for Tesla as a whole. I think having the company kind of change over to this SaaS portion, uh, not to mention what they're doing with Optimus, that's a whole nother um, niche of product that could add more money to the books for the company. But just strictly focusing on the rise of RoboTaxi and how it will transform the urban mobility. You know, you have companies that are out there that already do ride share. You have Uber, you have Lyft. Um, but when you know, in 2020, uh, they really had a hit. So the market was hit from a lot of those. Uh, they're still struggling with finances overall, trying to get people uh, to sign up to be Lyft drivers. If you're not in a bigger city, it really doesn't help. But I know if you're in like a small town and you have a vehicle and your vehicle's able to go and, you know, run errands or serve as a taxi a form of passive income in the current economy that we have now, I think is a game changer for a lot of people. Uh, having ways to have your vehicle be a form of passive income for you um, is a great alternative and may be the indicator that a lot of people need to go ahead and purchase a Tesla. But there will be people who do not purchase overall who are just like, oh, I'm going to stick with the petrol or gas powered vehicle. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I think as, you know, companies continue to grow with EVs, uh, Tesla is really setting the standard as to what to expect from an EV uh, company from their EV portion of their company. Now, Tesla is more than an EV company. It's a technology company. And they have shown that with Optimus as well as uh, some of the other solar projects that they have done um, with, you know, enhancing people's uh, capacity for getting in energy to the grid. So I think overall, just this one section of the company is kind of revolutionary. Um, it is shown with their stock price overall. And I think it's something that Wall Street in general is waiting on. So in the beginning, you had NVIDIA, they had their earnings, they talked about their Blackwell chips. Um, but that's kind of the chip set. If you're into tech, and you're into, you know, increasing teraflops and you understand all the terminology maybe that was something that you understood and you could see hey this is revolutionary you know changing all the different uh aspects and challenging moore's law uh on how chips uh communicate and making a new form of uh die in order to merge tips together having 10 terabytes changing uh hands in between for a seamless um uh coding is something that you understood, then more power to you. That's, you know, kind of where that bull run was. But with the current economy and where it's going, so much uncertainty in the market as a whole, 
Uh, I think this is kind of the champion of the market at the current moment. Uh, them rolling out RoboTaxi will have a global impact because it won't just be data from the U.S. It'll be data from China as well, um, as where as well as wherever Tesla owners are located. So if this can be implemented to current Tesla owners, uh, it'll be something that can be rolled out, you know, throughout the world, uh, which I think is huge uh, for the company. And then having all that data kind of shows the proof of concept of nvidia's blackwell platform and what ai is capable of so i think the whole market with 14 uh out of the analyst having a hold being the large portion i think they're just all waiting for that release of the august 8th rollout of robo taxi so drop a comment down below tell me what you think your analysis is of robo taxi are you excited for uh, the August 8th rollout of RoboTaxi. Do you think it's too soon for RoboTaxi or do you think uh, the market and the technology are prime for RoboTaxi to roll out into the U.S. and abroad? Make sure that thumbs up helps the YouTube algorithm and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.